please all of us welcome County Executive Ryan McMahon. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> thanks everybody. Um, and thanks uh, again, we've had, I think since last time we talked, we had a pretty busy month. Um, so let me get into it. Uh, right now, the uh, with Micron, um, on the site last week, we started to knock down homes that we acquired on Burnett Road uh, for that. Uh, the environmental reviews um, are going through um, and moving along. We did grant uh, and extend the uh, comment period uh, as been part of that process for uh, the state DEC and U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, they asked us to, so we extended the comment period. Um, out of that county is the lead agency on the environmental review. We anticipate that those reviews will be done around March or April, and that uh, certainly will trigger the mitigation that needs to be done. Um, certainly, there's going to be wetland mitigation on the site, likely to be done um, north of the power lines, which we own as well. Um, so we'll replace wetlands that are disturbed on the on the proper um, section of the site. But from a traffic standpoint, right, the the what we're going to do um, to Codnoy 3111, um, potentially 481, a new exit, 81 new exit, um, that will really be determined in this document. And then we'll have a timeline for when that construction will happen and not uh, take place. So th that's really important for um, you know, for those communities in Cicero and Clay um, today. Um, so uh, excited about that. Also, um, Micron will likely find out its CHIPS Act award from the federal government um, th later this month, being November. Uh, the, uh, the By project size, they're just entitled to close to $4 billion. Um, but the reality is, is there's a waiver process all the four major projects in the country uh, have all requested a waiver. Um, so Intel in Ohio, uh, TSMC in Phoenix, Samsung in Texas, and obviously Micron here. Um, so we expect the award to be larger than $4 billion. Quite frankly, I wish they would give them the entire $30 billion pot of money because our project would happen a lot faster, um, meaning the, the four fabs uh, being built out. Um, and so that that's going to be, um, you know, big news for Micron so they can figure out essentially how they're going to finance, um, it, it, you know, the, the actual fab, which it will be a $20 billion um, first fab investment. So um, that's that's really important. Um, two really key pieces of workforce development uh, infrastructure, um, one or two, one of them two weeks ago when Micron was here. Um, Manish Bhatia um, and April Arnzen, the number two and three in the company, um, they were at OCC as we unveiled our, um, you know, uh, workforce development training lab uh, there, uh, which uh, we already have 36 students signed up for the certifications um, for those um, certifications, which, you know, really apply to any uh, high tech manufacturer for technicians, but specifically for the semiconductor industry. And so that was that was that was big. Um, we put up five million dollars at the county, um, and part of the site selection process, we made those commitments. Um, Micron matched it, so they put five million dollars towards that project. So um, that's uh, important uh, for us to start developing the talent, not just for Micron, but the whole uh, ecosystem, the whole cluster, um, and all of our other uh, manufacturing companies that are here and having success as well. Uh, next week. We will be um, all together again with leaders from Micron and then uh, likely um, the governor, um, the, the mayor, as we uh, really kick off the, the ribbon cutting for the um, Syracuse STEAM School. Um, that's uh, for those who don't know what we did is we partnered with uh, the county, the city, the Syracuse City School Districts and BOCES. We got the first of its kind state uh, legislation passed. So it's actually a countywide STEAM school. Um, and so uh, students from across the community will go there. This will be, this will not replace STEM education in other school districts, right? But this will be specifically for that, right? So your leaders in that space, um, these kids that know what they want to do, they know they want to be an engineer, they know they want to go. Um, 
you know, be a technician, they know they want to go uh, develop uh, and become a member of a trade to, for construction management. Um, this will all be done there, but there will be a heavy focus on the arts as well. Um, so the old Greystone building, the old Central Tech building is where it will be in downtown. And it has an, really an iconic, um, uh, you know, a theater area there that will be restored. And so it's, an, you know, going to end up being about an $85 million project. Um, the work actually will start this week as the roof starts getting um, replaced, but we'll have a ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, when we brought Amazon in uh, two years ago, um, we worked with Amazon and they made a $1.75 million commitment to the STEAM school. Certainly Micron is going to be making a, a, a large commitment as well. Um, and I'm, I'm sure Micron will talk about what that is um, next Thursday uh, when we kick that off. But two really important workforce development infrastructure uh, projects that are, are quite significant. Um, the aquarium project construction started this week or this, yeah, this week, Monday, right? What day is today? Today's Thursday. Okay, Monday. Um, so it, uh, that if you drive by the Inner Harbor, you'll see the site work, the clearing that's been done. Um, that gives you an idea what the footprint of the building will look like. It's 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 neat. Um, and so I know there's a lot of debate about the aquarium. I know there's somebody in the community that really doesn't like it. Um, but the uh, reality is the project already passed two years ago um, and is already in construction. Um, there will be an aquarium. Uh, so the, uh, but that's a cool project. Um, ironically enough, um, when I met with Manish Badia from Micron after the OCC event, um, I wanted an update on you know the health of the company and where things are going in the semiconductor industry. But he actually asked me the first question was where where are we with the aquarium project? Um, that's something that they're very interested in partnering on. But also from that uh, workforce development side, they view that as being a key piece of educational infrastructure as well. Um, really big economic news uh, to further validate um, everything that we've been working on. Um, a week ago, um, we met with uh, Leader Schumer, um, you know, the mayor, uh, center state CEO, um, and, uh, you know, other business leaders from Saab and uh, TTM and uh, uh, Sanjay Marosha uh, came into town to announce that we uh, won a federal designation for a tech uh, hub corridor. Uh, we partnered with uh, basically uh, the Finger Lakes and Western New York. Um, Erie counties and Monroe counties with Rochester and Buffalo. The reason we did that, quite frankly, was because Schumer asked us to do it, um, you know, but there will be synergies that we'll be able to complement each other on. But certainly we're driving the growth in this corridor. Um, and to follow up the growth of that corridor, we won um, a site selection project um, with TTM Technologies, which we announced yesterday, um, $130 million project um, expansion at the DeWitt location where the former Anoran is. Um, they have 600 employees today. They'll add another 400 employees. Um, they'll be making uh, circuit boards for um, defense manufacturers and the semiconductor industry. So it, first really huge validation, validator after Micron. Um, you know, some suggested that after Micron, companies wouldn't want to come because of uh, the, the talent wars over workforce. But um, our workforce development strategy that we're, we're implementing for Micron, TTM felt very confident that that would work. Um, TTM Technologies is headquartered out of California. We were competing um, with South Carolina, and so we beat South Carolina. And uh, so that's a huge win. It's the third largest private sector investment in our county's history. Um, the first two uh, being Amazon, um, which we did a couple of years ago. Um, that was a $420 million um, CapEx investment. And then obviously um, Micron, $100 billion. Um, so we'll, we'll never get one bigger than that. Um, so the really important th things there. Um, we we announced um, a second round of OCHIP awards. Um, and now we're gonna announce a third round. Um, we're really happy um, with what we're seeing. Um, we're essentially, with the, the third round that we announced is probably in the next week, but the uh, will be up to almost 800 new units that will be under construction. A lot of these adaptive reuse projects, um, mixed income, affordable market rate. Um, you all know this, but uh, until the, the hiring starts, 
with all these engineers, you're probably not going to see the boom in new construction for single family residences um, with the prices and interest rates where they are. Um, but one way to solve inventory um, challenges and get more listings for you all is to present more housing options in general. Um, people and empty nesters are, are looking to cash out um, with the uh, rising um, you know, values of their home. They just don't have anywhere to go. Um, and from a policy standpoint on housing, we will be coming out with um, a, a pilot related to senior communities as well. Um, I do believe that if we can develop senior communities, um, that will free up a lot of existing inventory to get us to, um, you know, the, the end game once the hiring really begins in 2025. So um, those are some, some updates. I'm happy to take more questions uh, from folks, see what's on their mind. So Ryan, I have a I have a question. I always have questions, um, but we're still having issues with the towns um, for them to sort of like go with the idea of expansion and um, new construction. Do you see anything uh, or have any comment on that? Well, I think they're gonna they're going through their exercise, most of the large ones, right, with their comprehensive plan updates, and so I don't think you're gonna see a lot of. Um, drastic uh, moves related to housing outside of what's already in the docket until those are complete, because that will be their roadmap on how to accomplish um, where new single family projects will go, where they would want to see some density. Um, I do think they'll get there um, like anything, right? You know, when at the county level, when the state of New York steps on our toes, we get a little bit, you know, upset. And I think in a way, the parochialism is held over. Um, but we're funding all their their comprehensive plans. So I think that's mm -hmm. going to help Nance. I know Clay, Cicero, um, Van Buren have already all started. Um, Lysander is going to start. Um, they're updating their water revitalization plan now. So they didn't want to do two things at once. Um, and then, you know, we're doing villages as well. Um, and so I think overall, we're, we're going to see a lot of movement in 24 on all of this. Thank you. That sounds great. I have four or five questions now. Um, so I'll start with the first one. With the anticipated increase in population, do you foresee a major expansion of our airport? I don't know if right now, um, I don't know if you'll see the physical expansion. I think there's a couple of things that the airport is, is working on. One is various um, new uh, routes, um, specifically to the West Coast and new connections that make it easier to get to the West Coast. Um, we are the third fastest growing um, year over year airport in the country related to flights. Um, so we're already experiencing um, you know, strong growth. The other thing is we do have a lot of land at the airport and there is a lot of planning going on now. Um, there certainly is going to be more uh, warehousing and commercial um, space out at the airport. So the, a lot of things there. Um, it, it's good that we have the ability to grow there. They have a lot of projects going on. They got the parking garage going on now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the airport's going to be a key component to uh, capturing the growth. And especially when you think about a supply chain, um, a foreign supply chain, you're going to need more connections to the West Coast. And then you're going to need more direct connections to other parts of the world. That doesn't mean connections from Syracuse to Taiwan or Syracuse to Japan, but to other mid um, other larger markets, um, you know, having more frequent flights going to those larger markets. Thank you. Uh, what is being built at Henry Clay and Wetzel Road? Is that the Clay Marketplace project that we just did a groundbreaking for with Ozzy and Syracuse Realty Group? Ozzy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's ninety six. That's that's called Clay Marketplace. That's that's a, kind of a miniature um, center driven project that we've talked about. Um, there's going to be 96 market rate apartments and uh, there will be um, some uh, commercial and retail components as well. So think of medical, think of, um, you know, restaurants, um, some some soft retail to help service the, the neighborhood right there. So um, that's a good project that's underway. Um, the the uh, first uh, commercial buildings already kind of up. You can see it. And then the the uh, 48 unit um uh, apartment building started and there will be another 48 unit right next to it. Thank you. Um, I was, I was kicking dirt there this week. That's why I know so much about that. <laughs> Very good. Uh, third question. 
Are there any plans to promote new urbanism versus suburban sprawl and developer led planning? Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what the center driven development talks about. I think the reality is, is that we're going to find ourselves at a, at a point of view where we're used to having one city in our county. Um, you know, Oneida County has multiple cities, right? They're just small. Um, the reality is, is that the town of Clay could be a city today. It's big enough. Um, and, you know, the town of Cicero could be a city, right? These are going to be choices for those local leaders at some point. Um, and so, but it's not sprawl once if, if it's growth. And so I think for a um, period of time, you, you know, we're not interested in laying down more sewers just to lay down more sewers and, you know, really fit the definition of sprawl. Um, but you're going to see other communities that are large that have the ability to develop within their infrastructure do it. And so we want to see it happen in a way that brings value um, and creates centers and, and areas where people will want to live, not just today, but the test of time. Um, you know, downtown Syracuse, I think you'll continue to see old buildings become new housing um, for people. Um, I think, one, you know, I think overall, um, the Inner Harbor is probably the one neighborhood in the city of Syracuse that has the most growth potential um, and, and arguably the whole region. Uh, and the, but there is a lot of the, those old chip dollars that we use. A lot of the projects we do are we're revitalizing housing units that were offline and now are coming back online in the city of Syracuse. So um, the the idea that the city is getting left behind here is actually, actually not not accurate at all. Some have suggested it. I'm not saying this question is suggesting that the reality is the city is the big winner. Um, they have no financial uh, bucks in this Micron deal, yet they're going to see huge growth from it. Um, whereas the town of Clay at least has, they have dollars and cents um, in the deal as well as the local school district there does as well. Very good, thank you. Next question is, are there any updates on Shopping Town or District East? Yeah, yeah, so um, we have eminent domain hearings next week, uh, public hearing in the town of DeWitt. Um, the challenge there is that Benderson owns Macy's and Transform owns Sears. Um, the developer uh, who is District East um, has uh, tried to purchase those properties for months. Um, and now we're at a point where we just can't wait anymore. So um, we will start the eminent domain uh, process, which is the hearings um, that will happen. Before, we couldn't do this earlier because you had uh, a zone change that was necessary with the town of DeWitt, which they moved on, and you needed an environmental review on the project, um, what District East is, that was done over the last month. So basically, we've uh, as soon as we could have, um, we've started the eminent domain process, um, and my understanding is that, um, you know, that will probably, it's going to force Benderson's hand. They may end up suing us and extending it, but it should be resolved in 2024. And um, the last new question that I see is, can you please give a quick update on the Jamesville Penitentiary? Yeah, it's an expensive, uh, you know, piece of county infrastructure. Right now, there's 36 inmates and there's over 80 employees. Um, and uh, you're so essentially we're paying $1,500 per day per inmate. Um, you can go to a Ritz-Carlton anywhere in the world and and. and spend probably less than that. So um, it, what we proposed was that the uh, um, we have uh, workforce development surplus, uh, employee surplus in Jamesville at the correctional facility downtown. We don't have enough employees. And so uh, we proposed a merger. The county legislature supported our plan. That's the policy once they vote on it. Um, the sheriff uh, has sued. Um, co the courts will hear the case in November. Um, we're, we're confident the courts will agree with the county legislature and uh, the county executive. And then um, we'll move forward with that merger going into 2024. Okay. At this moment, that is all the questions that I see. Corey, I can't hear the baby, but the baby looks like the oh, no, just so cute. <laughs> it's been entertaining, Corey. We like yeah. it. We like it. Ryan, what was the question? In Jamesville? What will happen with the Jamesville site? Yeah. Uh, we don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't know. Um, I mean, it, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll hold on to it. We'll, we'll save over ten million dollars a year just not having it being operating. Um, you know, eventually, do you look at another public use? Maybe. Um, eventually, maybe do you subdivide it, sell some of the land? Maybe. Um, but you know, we haven't, you know, 
some some of the um, tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists thought that we had a, a plan, but we don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we pretty well? There was another Henry question. Clay, and Henry Clay, that's, I, I, I did answer your question. Um, that's the uh, Clay Marketplace project, I think, unless I screwed it up. I'm pretty no, sure it's that. Yeah. Well, they're saying there's another one, but I, I don't know. Oh, that I don't. I, I, I don't know it's that. On Henry Clay across from the Clay Park, New Wetzel. There's a New Wetzel goes off to the side by the City Clay Park. I don't know. Yeah, I, if it's not if it's not the Ozzy project, I, that's what I thought it was. If it's not, I'm not sure what that is. I think it is though, because it's a lot of land. He has a it lot. It is. Of it's land. a big project that butts the cemetery right there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Is there any more? What do we have here? Uh, somebody said they think it's private storage, but uh, oh, no. Okay. Then oh, um, Ivy says hello to everyone. <laughs> oh, how cute, baby! How sweet! All right, I think we're really good. All right, I guess we'll see you again next month.